Good evening. This is All India Radio. I am Nishit Kumar and with me is Anuja Kumar with the evening news. The headlines. India stands with people of Sri Lanka. Extended unprecedented support of over 3.8 billion dollars this year says government as massive protests erupt in island nation over economic crisis. Prime Minister Narendra Modi addresses natural farming conclave at Surat in Gujarat through video conferencing, stresses on adopting natural farming to serve Mother Earth and protect quality of soil. Pradhan Mantri National Apprenticeship Mela to be held tomorrow at over 200 locations across the country. Amarnath Yatra remains temporarily suspended in Jammu and Kashmir. Efforts continue to trace missing people. 76 people killed in rain-related incidents in Maharashtra so far. Telangana government declares three-day holiday in educational institutions from tomorrow due to heavy rain. In cricket, third and the final T20 between India and England underway in Nottingham. And in Wimbledon tennis, Novak Djokovic clashes with Nick Kyrgios in the men's singles final. And now the news in detail. India has extended an unprecedented support of over 3.8 billion US dollars this year itself for ameliorating the serious economic situation in Sri Lanka. In response to media queries on the situation in Sri Lanka, External Affairs Ministry spokesperson Arindam Bagchi said India will continue to follow closely the recent developments in Sri Lanka. He said India stands with the people of Sri Lanka as they seek to realize their aspirations for prosperity and progress through democratic means and values. The island nation is suffering from rampant inflation and is struggling to import food, fuel and medicines as it faces its worst economic crisis in 70 years. The country has also run out of foreign currency and had to impose a ban on sales of petrol and diesel for private vehicles. Mr. Bhakti said India is Sri Lanka's closest neighbor and the two countries share deep civilizational bonds. He said India is aware of the many challenges that Sri Lanka and its people have been facing and we have stood with the Sri Lankan people as they have tried to overcome this difficult period. Earlier in the day, External Affairs Minister Dr. S. Jayashankar said India will provide all possible help and support to Sri Lanka to tide over the current economic crisis in the island nation. The minister was speaking to media in Tiruvananthapuram today on his arrival for a three-day visit to Sri Lanka. We have been very supportive of Sri Lanka and we are trying to help and we are always very helpful where they are concerned. But they are right now working through their problems, so we have to wait and see. There is no refugee crisis right now. Sri Lanka's Army Chief General Shavendra Silva today sought people's support to maintain peace as the island nation grapples with massive protests erupted over unprecedented economic crisis. Four ministers have resigned from the Sri Lankan cabinet over the last two days amid the unrest. Thousands of anti-government protesters in Sri Lanka yesterday barged into the official residence of embattled President Gotabaya Rajapaksa in central Colombo's high security fort area after breaking the barricades as they demanded his resignation. According to an official, the Sri Lankan president has agreed to resign on the 13th of July. Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe has also offered to resign. In the meantime, the International Monetary Fund, IMF, said it was closely monitoring the ongoing developments in the cash-starved country and hoped that the political crisis will be resolved soon to allow for the resumption of dialogue on an IMF-supported program. Talking to AIR News, former Indian diplomat Ashok Sajanhar said, Army and all-party government might have worked on some plans to iron out the situation emerging out of grave economic crisis in the island nation. Sri Lanka has been passing through an unanticipated and worst economic crisis that has resulted in a political crisis over the last several weeks. There is anarchy, there is chaos. Maybe now it is up to the army to come forward to give assurance that peace and stability should be maintained. The Speaker of the Parliament has got together with all the other parties and it has been decided to establish an all-party government. That might be able to get the confidence of the people. But the future days and weeks for Sri Lanka are going to be very tense and stressful. Prime Minister Narendra Modi addressed a natural farming conclave held at Surat in Gujarat through video conferencing today. 
The conclave witnessed the participation of thousands of farmers and all other stakeholders who have made adoption of natural farming in Surat a success story. Speaking on the occasion, the Prime Minister reminded the farmers that adopting natural farming is a means of prosperity and is like serving Mother Earth. He said natural farming will protect the quality of the soil and also improve crop productivity. When you do prakruti khethi, then you do the service of the earth. The quality of the earth, the land of the earth, you do the service of the earth. When you do prakruti khethi, then you do the prakruti and the paryavaran of the earth. जब आप प्राकृतिक खेती से जुड़ते हैं तो आपको सहज रूप से गौ माता की सेवा का सौभाग्य भी मिल जाता है जीव सेवा का आशीर्वाद भी मिलता है The Prime Minister said, our villages have shown that they can not only bring change, but can also lead the change. He expressed confidence that the mass movement regarding natural farming will also be widely successful in the coming years. He said the sooner farmers join this movement, the greater they will reap its benefits. When जल जीवन मिशन का उदाहरण हमारे सामने है स्वच्छ भारत जैसा इतना बड़ा अभियान जिसकी तारीफ आज सभी वैश्विक संस्थाएं भी कर रही हैं उसकी सफलता का भी बड़ा श्रेय हमारे गांवों को है इसी तरह डिजिटल इंडिया मिशन की असाधारण सफलता भी उन लोगों को देश का जवाब है जो कहते थे गांव में बदलाव लाना आसान नहीं है ये मन बना लिया था लोगों ने वे गांव में तो ऐसे ही जीना है ऐसे ही गुजारा करना है हमारे गांवों ने दिखा दिया है कि गांव न केवल बदलाव ला सकते हैं बल्कि बदलाव का नेतृत्व भी कर सकते हैं The Prime Minister pointed out that the entire world is talking about a sustainable lifestyle. He said this is one area where India has led the world for centuries. Therefore, now is the time when the country must move forward on the path of natural farming and take full advantage of the global opportunities that are emerging. Prakrutik kheti, yakti jat khushali ka rasta to kholti hi hai. Ye sarve bhavantu sukhina ha, sarve santu niramaya. इस भावना को भी साकार करते साथियों आज पूरी दुनिया सस्टेनेबल लाइफस्टाइल की बात कर रही है शुद्ध खान पान की बात कर रही है एक ऐसा क्षेत्र है जिसमें भारत के पास हजारों सालों का ज्ञान और अनुभव है हमने सदियों तक इस दिशा में विश्व का नेतृत्व किया है इसलिए आज हमारे पास अवसर है कि हम प्राकृतिक खेती जैसे अभियानों में आगे आकर कृषि से जुड़ी वैश्विक संभावनाओं का काम सभी तक लाभ पहुंचाएं। The Prime Minister said Gujarat is leading the country's resolution of achieving the goals of the Amrit Kal. He said success of Surat in connecting 75 farmers in every panchayat with natural farming can become an example for the entire country. AIR correspondent reports that Prime Minister Modi had exhorted at least 75 farmers in each village to adopt natural way of farming in his address at Gujarat Panchayat Mahasamelan in March this year. Consequently, at least 75 farmers were identified in each Gram Panchayat and were motivated and trained to undertake natural farming. The Prime Minister today also addressed the birth centenary celebration of Swami Atmasthanand through video message today. Mr. Modi paid his tributes to Swami Atmasthanand by reminiscing the time spent with him. Speaking at the event, the Prime Minister expressed happiness over the release of a photobiography and documentary to take Swami Atmasthanand's mission to the masses. Mr. Modi highlighted that Swami Atmasthanand received initiation from Swami Vigyanand, a disciple of Sri Ramakrishna Paramhans. He said, be it Adi Shankaracharya or Swami Vivekanand, the saint tradition of India has always been proclaiming Ek Bharat Shresht Bharat.
साथियों सैकड़ों साल पहले आदि शंकराचार्य हो या आधुनिक काल में स्वामी विवेकानंद हमारी संत परंपरा हमेशा एक भारत श्रेष्ठ भारत का उद्घोष करती रही है रामकृष्ण मिशन की तो स्थापना एक भारत श्रेष्ठ भारत के विचार से जुड़ी हुई है स्वामी विवेकानंद ने इसी संकल्प को मिशन के रूप में जिया था उनका जन्म बंगाल में हुआ था लेकिन आप देश के किसी भी हिस्से में जाइए आपको ऐसा शायद ही कोई क्षेत्र मिला जहां विवेकानंद जी गए न हो या उनका प्रभाव न हो The Prime Minister said Swami Ramakrishna Paramhansa was one such saint who had a clear vision of Goddess Kali and had surrendered his whole being at the feet of Goddess Kali. Swami Ramakrishna Paramhansa ek aise sant the jinhone Maa Kali ka spasht sakshatkar kiya tha. Jinhone Maa Kali ke charno mein apna sarvasya samarpit kar diya tha. Wo kehte the ye sampurna jagat ये चराचर सब कुछ मां की चेतना से व्याप्त है यही चेतना बंगाल की काली पूजा में दिखती है यही चेतना बंगाल और पूरे भारत की आस्था में दिखती है जब आस्था इतनी पवित्र होती है तो शक्ति साक्षात हमारा पथ प्रदर्शन करती है इसलिए मां काली का वो असीमित असीम आशीर्वाद हमेशा भारत के साथ है The Ministry of Skill Development and Entrepreneurship will hold Pradhan Mantri National Apprenticeship Mela tomorrow as part of Prime Minister Skill India Mission. So far, over 1 lakh 88 thousand applicants have participated in the Apprenticeship Mela, and more than 67 thousand apprenticeship offers have been made on the platform as of today. The one-day event will feature 36 sectors and more than 1 thousand companies and 500 distinct sorts of trades. The ministry will host the event at more than 200 locations giving applicants the opportunity to shape their careers through apprenticeship training. Candidates must have a 5th to 12th grade pass certificate, a skill training certificate and ITI diploma or a graduate degree to participate. The major purpose of this program is to encourage companies to hire more apprentices while also assisting employers in discovering and developing their potential via training and practical skill sets. You are listening to the evening news on All India Radio. A reminder of the headlines before we move on. India stands with people of Sri Lanka. Extended unprecedented support of over 3.8 billion dollar this year says government as massive protests erupt in island nation over economic crisis. Prime Minister Narendra Modi addresses natural farming conclave at Surat in Gujarat through video conferencing, stresses on adopting natural farming to serve mother earth and protect quality of soil. Pradhan Mantri National Apprenticeship Mela to be held tomorrow at over 200 locations across the country. Amar Nath Yatra remains temporarily suspended in Jammu and Kashmir. Efforts continue to trace missing people. 76 people killed in rain-related incidents in Maharashtra so far. Telangana government declares three-day holiday in educational institutions from tomorrow due to heavy rain. In cricket, third and final T20 between India and England underway in Nottingham. And in Wimbledon tennis, Novak Djokovic clashes with Nick Kyrgios in men's singles final. For quick news updates around the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. अपने बिजनेस को बढ़ाने के लिए लीजिए आकाशवाणी का सहयोग और दीजिए उसे बुलंदियों के पंख. आपका बिजनेस लोकल है या राष्ट्रीय? आकाशवाणी देती है उपभोक्ताओं तक पहुंचने का हर विकल्प. और अब तो आप घर दफ्तर या दुकान पर बैठे बैठे कर सकते हैं आकाशवाणी के किसी भी केंद्र के लिए विज्ञापनों की बुकिंग आकाशवाणी के विभिन्न चैनलों पर विज्ञापन देना सुलभ और सस्ता बुकिंग है तो संपर्क करें आठ सात शून्य 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 एक चार दो चार दो आरोप आठ सात शून्य 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 एक चार दो चार दो कॉम्पिटेटिव एग्जाम की तैयारी करने वाले परीक्षार्थियों के लिए ऑल इंडिया रेडियो लेकर आया है प्रोग्राम अभ्यास जिसमें आप अपने सवाल पूछते हैं व्हाट्सएप नंबर नाइन टू एट नाइन जीरो नाइन फोर जीरो डबल फोर आरोप या फिर ईमेल करते हैं अभ्यास डॉट ए आई आर न्यूज एट जी मेल डॉट कॉम आरोप जिसके जवाब आपको मिलते हैं हर शनिवार रात साढ़े नौ बजे और इस बार का विषय सोशियोलॉजी और आपके सवालों का इंतजार हम करेंगे बुधवार तेरह जुलाई तक आपका अभ्यास 
हमारा प्रयास वेलकम बैक यू आर ट्यून टू द इवनिंग न्यूज ऑन ऑल इंडिया रेडियो In Jammu and Kashmir efforts continue to trace the missing people after flash floods triggered by a cloud burst near the holy cave shrine of Sri Amar Nath ji swept away many pilgrims killing at least 16 people search operation is underway amid fears that many pilgrims are still trapped under the debris around 40 people are still missing while 65 others have been injured after the flash floods and landslides rummaged through tents and community kitchens near the holy cave shrine the yatra has been temporarily suspended from jammu and from both pahalgam and baltal routes in view of the rescue operations at the holy cave shrine talking to media persons jammu and kashmir lieutenant governor manoj sena said efforts are underway to repair the road after the cloud burst incident टेरेन बहुत दुर्गम है लेकिन जिस तरह से हमारे सीएपीएफ के जवानों ने जम्मू कश्मीर पुलिस के जवानों ने पूरे प्रशासन ने और आर्मी के लोगों ने वहां रेस्क्यू ऑपरेशन किया वो निश्चित रूप से प्रशंसनीय है प्रशासन पूरी तरह से तत्पर है मोटे तौर पर मैं समझता हूं कि एक जगह एक डेब्री से उसको छोड़ करके सारे ऑपरेशन पूरे कर लिए गए हैं रास्ते को ठीक करने का काम तेज गति से हो रहा है और वो मैं उम्मीद करता हूं कि आज पूरा हो जाएगा Rain is wreaking havoc in several parts of the country. Very heavy rain is lashing Maharashtra and Vidarbha region since yesterday. Nine persons have lost their lives in the last 24 hours in various rain-related incidents in Maharashtra. As per the State Disaster Management Authority, 76 people have lost their lives so far and 62 people are injured in various rain-related incidents. Around 5000 people have been evacuated while over 800 houses have been damaged. Currently 13 teams of NDRF and 3 teams of SDRF are working in the state. India Meteorological Department has issued red alert in Chandrapur and Gadchiroli districts and orange alert for Konkan region for today. For tomorrow red alert has been issued for various districts of Konkan and West Vidarbha. In Telangana incessant rains continue to lash several parts of the state for third consecutive day today. Normal life has been thrown out of gear at many places. Several streams and rivulets are in spate due to heavy rains for the past few days in the catchment areas. Meanwhile, state government has declared holidays in educational institutions. All educational institutions will remain closed tomorrow and on Tuesday and Wednesday. More from our correspondent. The state authorities are on high alert following Met officials warned heavy to very heavy rains for two more days. Chief Minister K Chandrasekhar Rao has appealed to the people especially those living close to water bodies to remain alert after high level review meeting in Hyderabad he informed that the NDRF teams have been put on standby to carry out relief operations and services of air force have also been asked for in case of need the state government has declared holidays on monday tuesday and wednesday to all educational institutions in the state control rooms have been opened at district headquarters and help desks have been opened at all municipalities to meet exigencies lakshmi ayr news hyderabad The National Investigation Agency NIA has arrested the seventh accused Farhad Mohammad Sheikh in connection with Udaipur killing case. The case pertains to killing of Kanhaiya Lal in Udaipur, Rajasthan at his shop in Malda Street. The agency said the accused was a close criminal associate of one of the main accused Riaz Attari. He was also an active part of the conspiracy to kill Kanhaiya Lal. NIA said further investigations in the case are in progress. NDA presidential candidate Draupadi Murmu reached Bengaluru in Karnataka today to seek the support for her candidature in the upcoming presidential elections slated to be held on the 18th of this month. Later Ms Murmu held a meeting with Karnataka Chief Minister Basavraj Bommai, former Chief Minister BS Yadurappa, Union Minister Prahlad Joshi, BJP State President Nalin Kumar Katil and BJP MPs and MLAs from the state. Ashadi Ekadashi is being observed today. It is one of the most important religious festivals of Maharashtra. This ceremony is generally held at Pandharpur where a huge number of devotees gather to celebrate the festival. During the festival a religious procession festival is held every year during the Ashad Shukla Paksha. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has greeted people on the occasion of Ashadi Ekadashi. Mr Modi also shared a video from an earlier Man Ki Baat program where he talked about the Varkari tradition and the divinity of Pandharpur. 
द फेस्टिवल ऑफ सेक्रीफाइस ईद उल अधा और बकरीद इज बींग सेलिब्रेटेड विथ रिलीजियस फर्वर एंड गेटी इन वेरियस पार्ट्स ऑफ द कंट्री टूडे द फेथफुल्स ऑफर्ड ईद नमाज और प्रेयर्स इन ईद गाज एंड मॉस्क दिस मॉर्निंग लेटर दे एक्सचेंज ईद ग्रीटिंग ईद उल अधा इज सेलिब्रेटेड टू कमेमोरेट द विलिंगनेस ऑफ हजरत इब्राहिम टू सेक्रीफाइस इज ओनली सन इन ओबीडियंस ऑफ गॉड्स कमांड रिपोर्ट्स ऑफ ईद प्रेयर्स कॉन्ग्रीगेशन हैव ऑल्सो कम इन फ्रॉम अदर पार्ट ऑफ द कंट्री द प्रेजिडेंट द वाइस प्रेजिडेंट एंड द प्राइम मिनिस्टर हैव ग्रीटेड पीपल ऑन द ओकेजन ऑफ ईद उल अधा प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेन्द्र मोदी हैज एक्सटेंड ग्रीटिंग्स टू बांग्लादेश प्राइम मिनिस्टर शेख हसीना ऑन द ओकेजन In his letter to his Bangladesh counterpart, Prime Minister Modi said that as people of the two countries prosper, the festival of Eid ul-Azhar reminds us of the virtues of sacrifice and sharing, especially with less fortunate members of our societies whose interests have been of priority to both the governments. The fourth phase of sea trials for indigenous aircraft carrier Vikrant has been successfully completed today during which integrated trials of majority of equipment and systems on board were undertaken defense minister said the ship's delivery is being targeted by the end of this month following by commissioning of the ship in august this year to commemorate azadi ka amrit mahotsav As our nation celebrates the 75th year of independence a series of events is being organized by the government as part of Azadi ka Amrit Mahotsav to commemorate the occasion All India Radio News brings its listeners Amrit Mahotsav quiz a special quiz on India's freedom movement and its glorious history the next question of Amrit Mahotsav quiz will be shared with the listeners in the morning bulletin tomorrow and now let's listen to our special program Azadi ka safar highlighting the importance of the day during the freedom struggle आजादी का अमृत महोत्सव आजादी का सफर विद ए आई आर न्यूज बर्थ ऑफ अ नेशन India's glorious freedom struggle is one of the greatest struggles the modern world has ever witnessed. ए आई आर न्यूज ब्रिंग्स यू अ ग्लिम्स ऑफ द स्ट्रगल एवरी डे On the 10th of July 1806 the Vellore revolution started against the British Raj. It was the first instance of a large scale and violent uprising by Indian sepoys against the East India Company. After Tipu Sultan was killed on May the 4th 1799 During the siege of Srirangapatnam the British troops took over the kingdom of Mysore the British handed Mysore over to the Wadiars the former rulers of Mysore and Tipu's children and their families were exiled to Vellore however this strategy soon came back to haunt them Tipu's children their families and innumerable servants formed a community of Mysoreans in exile which numbered up to 3000 and split over a considerable area around Vellore Tipu's family soon began conspiring to avenge the death of their father and leader Ee thembarum enbadum palvarum enbadum dosiyamanada ara kaattigale ini theerbugal enbadu soothagamanada On November the 14th 1805 6 years after the bloody battle at Sri Rangapatnam An order was issued by J.F. Craddock, Commander-in-Chief of the British troops, detailing the new military dress code. According to the order, the sepoys had to dress in a uniform and shave their facial hair, and were forced to wear a leather turban that had a cockade made from a cow hide. Though the order was passed to establish uniformity, the Hindu sepoys objected to wearing leather headgear. Manida, manida, ini um virigal si vandal ulagam viriyum, viriyil variyum udiram murudum ini um saridam yerudum, asayum kodi gal uyerum uyerum nila vin mudugai urasum. When 21 sepoys from the 2nd Battalion, 4th Regiment, expressed their resentment, they were subjected to corporal punishment. and faced public lashing at Fort St George in Madras on the morning of the 10th of July 1806 the sepoys attacked Vellore fort a massacre followed in which more than 100 british soldiers were killed many of them shot while they slept 
the british flag was lowered by the sepoys and tipu's flag given to them by tipu's fourth son moizuddin was hoisted when a british cavalry regiment from arcot reached the fort it was already in possession of the activists soon though most of them were killed by the british forces and the rebellion was crushed Though the Vellore mutiny is often overshadowed by the events of 1857 its effects were felt in Britain the officers deployed at the fort were questioned about their intentions of introducing the changes that resulted in the uprising we also remember independence activist rahman khan a resident of satara maharashtra Khan was initially in the English East India Company army but left it to join the struggle for freedom from foreign rule during the uprising of 1857 he fought the british on several occasions in satara until he was caught by the company troops in the thick of a combat khan was put on trial for desertion and mutiny and sentenced to be transported for life with hard labor and irons Rahman Khan died in custody on the 10th of July 1859 in the Andaman Islands. AIR News salutes the brave son of the soil. That brings us to the end of this episode of Azadi Ka Safar with AIR News. See you in the next episode tomorrow. On to sports in the Wimbledon tennis men's singles final between top seed Novak Djokovic and Australia's Nick Kyrgios is underway in London. Novak Djokovic is ahead winning two sets now with 6-3, 6-4. A neck-to-neck fight is on in the fourth set when reports last came in. The 35-year-old Serbian is aiming to capture a seventh Wimbledon crown and 21st major title as he aims to close the gap on to the 22-time Grand Slam champion Rafael Nadal. In women's singles, 17th seed Elena Rybakina of Kazakhstan has clinched the women's singles title. In cricket England have set a target of 216 runs before India in the third and final T20 international at Trent Bridge in Nottingham. Batting first after winning the toss, England scored 215 runs in the stipulated 20 overs with the help of a scintillating 77 run off 39 ball from David Malan. In response, India were one for nil in two balls when reports last came in. Earlier hosts won the toss and opted to bat first. India has already taken an unassailable 2-0 lead in the series. And now let us take a look at the weather forecast for tomorrow. The national capital Delhi is expected to have generally cloudy sky with light rain. The minimum temperature will be around 27 degrees and the maximum 35. Mumbai will have generally cloudy sky with heavy rain. Minimum temperature will be 25 and the maximum around 28 degrees. Kolkata will have partly cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers. Minimum temperature will be 27, maximum around 33 degrees. Jammu and Muzaffarabad are expected to have partly cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers. Leh will have generally cloudy sky. Gil gave it also have generally cloudy sky with possibility of rain or thunderstorm or dust storm in the south hyderabad will have generally cloudy sky with intermittent rain tiruvananthapuram will have generally cloudy sky with a few spells of rain or thunder showers bengaluru will have generally cloudy sky with light rain and in the northeast guwahati shillong imphal aizol kohima gangtok will have partly cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers itanagar and agartala will have generally cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers And now before we end the bulletin the headlines once again India stands with people of Sri Lanka extended unprecedented support of over 3.8 billion dollars this year says government as massive protests erupt in the island nation over economic crisis Prime Minister Narendra Modi addresses natural farming conclave at Surat in Gujarat through video conferencing stresses on adopting natural farming to serve mother earth and protect quality of soil Pradhan Mantri National Apprenticeship Mela to be held tomorrow at over 200 locations across the country. Amarnath Yatra remains temporarily suspended in Jammu and Kashmir. Efforts continue to trace the missing people. 76 people killed in rain-related incidents in Maharashtra so far. Telangana government declares 3-day holiday in educational institutions from tomorrow due to heavy rain. And in cricket, third and the final T20 between India and England underway in Nottingham. and in Wimbledon tennis 
Novak Djokovic clashes with Nick Kyrgios in the men's singles final. And with that, we end the evening news. Good night.